my friends and fellow drivers. How's everybody doing? I trust you're all doing well. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, part two of uh, lifestyle. <laughs> uh, here we go. It's part two of lifestyle. I'm already thinking about the next video that I want to get done for you. So, but uh, yeah, part two of lifestyle. So this is what it's all about. Look, check it out. Um, I'm not saying that what I'm about to tell you about is the way you have to be. Nope. I'm just giving you a snapshot of how, of me and how it worked for me. Okay. All right. So here I am. Um, <clears throat> when I was 17 years old, I had no aspirations to be a truck driver up here. I, not that I can remember. I I wasn't thinking about it. I thought they were cool, but I was always into motors and cars and automotive stuff, right? And, and that, that kind of thing. But I, I wasn't saying that when I was 17, man, I sure can't wait to drive a truck. I wasn't doing that, all right? Okay, cool. But I am from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was in San Antonio, Texas. I bought my first car while I was in San Antonio, Texas, right? Okay, and I decided I was going to drive home for the 4th of July. Okay, <clears throat> so I've never driven such a distance before in my life because I flew out to San Antonio to start with from Philly. So I buy my car. The car is a kicking car. I love it. A 1969 Dodge Charger. I was the second owner of it, right? And I love the car. It was great. But the fuel gauge didn't work. And... I realized that the easiest way for me to handle that instead of because of the time that I was working with and uh, I knew that I needed to kind of hustle I couldn't get the part that I wanted when I needed it which was another fuel sending unit it's the thing that goes inside the gas tank and it's a float sort of like what's in your bathroom toilet you know it's a float that's in there and um, I couldn't get one. So I decided instead what I was going to do was what two pilots that I knew told me to do. Write down my odometer reading with a full tank of gas. The full tank for me meant I could see it at the filler, you know, the, the filler tube. I could see the full tank. And uh, what I would do, write down the odometer. I kept 10 gallons with me in the trunk. And then I would drive around the loop there in San Antonio until I ran out of fuel. Once I ran out of fuel, I wrote down the odometer and uh, filled it back up again and I went home. Okay, maybe that took me two days to do that. I, I don't remember right now, but that's what I did. And I let, after I got my results, I knew how far I could drive and I know that this thing works. Um, I said, okay, well, let's do it again. And I did it one more time, and I said, okay, I'm out of here, right? And I, that's when I took off and went to Philly. So I drove by myself using that method. I kept two, uh, 10 gallons with me in the trunk, but I drove. And I counted my mileage from my odometer, and I drove from San Antonio, Texas to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with no fuel gauge. Now, I did it solo, I did it by myself, and I enjoyed being by myself, right? Solo is, is the thing that I really enjoy, right? So that was cool. Um, I like people, I enjoy folks, I enjoy people's company, right? But I also enjoy my own privacy, I, own, I also enjoy my own space. Let's do a huge fast forward and move to 2024. Okay, so here I am in 2024 and uh, talking to you about being a transcontinental driver and understanding what that means. You have to have endurance. You have to have durability. You have to have the ability to uh, not drive yourself crazy, okay? And you have to have the ability to keep yourself entertained. When you can do these things, the, those are the building blocks of being able to do cross-country driving. I should have got an interview with the guy that had parked next to me earlier today, and uh, I, I kind of lost him, and then he ended up pulling off 
when I was doing other things in here, he was from Florida. Florida all over the truck. Now, I'm sitting in Barstow, California right now. That's transcontinental if it, if it ever was, right? And I really wanted to try to get him and say a few things, and then I was going to share that with you guys. But maybe I'll get around to that the next time I see somebody, you know? But I couldn't pull it off today. But I wanted to just tell you that what you need to do is to be able to... Uh, you have to sort of be that way to start with. You don't have to have the desire to go long distances if all you want to do is local driving. If all you want to do is drive for two, three hundred miles and then turn around and come back, you don't have to have the desire to go long distance. You have to have the desire to drive for five or six hours. That's all you need to be able to do. And then chill out for a minute you know and, and you're good to go maybe or maybe that doesn't work for you and you need to just be able to drive for two hours and then take a one hour lunch break and then turn around and come back hey if that's what floats your boat great you got a great boat right there okay you, you know what i'm saying um right now what i'm talking about is for our family here our community who has the long distance drivers in our community. So this is what we're talking about right now, the transcontinental folks who wanna go from point A to point B, from Miami, Florida, to Seattle, Washington. You, know, you follow me, okay? So that's what's up. And um, it's not that one is better than the other because what it's for, your life is what you're doing here. You're trying to make sure that you have a good life. And uh, for me, transcontinental is how I do it, okay? Others, they do regional. They do um, 10 western states, and that's all they want to do. That's cool, too. There's nothing wrong with it. And some people just want to do the one state they live in. My goodness, if you live in the state of California or you live in Texas, more power to you because, yikes, you can spend a couple of days in either one of those states, right? You all know this very well. So. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. It's all about building up those things that I said. You have to have endurance, durability. Um, you have to have the ability to not drive yourself crazy. And you have to be able to keep yourself entertained uh, so that you can do the cross-country driving. So that's it for now. Um, that's part two. I don't know if there's going to be a part three. I just kind of want to keep these things short, okay? All right, so you guys keep the emails coming. I appreciate them. Uh, and uh, share all of this stuff with your friends, okay? Uh, share this channel with your friends. Don't keep it to yourself. All right, so I'll talk to you later.